Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a review on some Elta MD sunscreens that I have, and it happens to be all of their tinted sunscreens. So I've had quite a few requests from you guys to review Elta MD sunscreens. I know that a lot of people that use them are huge fans of them, so there's a lot of buzz around these sunscreens. And as I was looking through them, I was trying to figure out what would be the most helpful, and I thought this would be a good first step to look at all of the tinted sunscreens that they have, put them to the test, compare them to each other, and let you know which ones I think are best for certain skin types, my favorites, the usual. So if you wanna hear my thoughts on all of these sunscreens, you're in the right spot. I have their UV Clear formulation, their UV Physical formulation, UV Daily, and UV Elements. And again, they're all tinted. So let's jump right into it. Let's start off with UV Daily. So this sunscreen has 1.7 fluid ounces in it and it retails for $31.95. These are definitely not the most affordable sunscreens I've ever reviewed, so I totally understand why people wanna see if these are actually worth the money or not. This one is $31.50. They're all around the same price, but with some slight variations. So this says that it is a broad spectrum SPF 40. It's sheer and lightweight with hyaluronic acid, transparent zinc oxide, and UVA and UVB protection, which is the same thing essentially as broad spectrum protection. It's supposed to be a moisturizing facial sunscreen for normal combination and post-procedure skin. Active ingredients in this daily sunscreen are 9% zinc oxide and 7.5% octinazate. So it's a combination sunscreen. We have mineral and chemical filters. And I have to say that the ingredient label here is not the most impressive, noteworthy thing I've ever seen. That doesn't mean it's bad by any means, but I feel like I was just expecting to see a bit more on these labels just because this brand has so much hype right now. And there really isn't anything that's extremely noteworthy in my perspective, aside from the fact that it does have tocopherol in it and sodium hyaluronate, which is the salt form of hyaluronic acid. So tocopherol is vitamin E, a great antioxidant for the skin and sodium hyaluronate is going to help to plump the skin and help water to bind to the surface of our skin to add hydration. But those are also ingredients I feel like we can find in a lot of other sunscreens. So that's why I feel like it's not something that's incredibly spectacular or surprising for me to see. We see that a lot in other sunscreens and sunscreens that are quite frankly more affordable. And then aside from that, this just has quite a few different texture enhancers and emollients, things that are designed to help to soften and smooth the skin. This actually has petrolatum as the second ingredient, which is a really nice skin soothing emollient. And then it has dimethicone, which is a silicone based ingredient towards the top of the label as well. The good thing is about this sunscreen is that that there's nothing in here that should be irritating to the skin. There's no essential oils, no forms of fragrance, there are no proven skin sensitizers or irritants, so this really should be a safer option for those of you that do have sensitive skin, extremely dry skin, or acne prone skin. The thing that does stand out to me about this sunscreen is the formulation. It really, really is nice, and when you first pump it out of the bottle, it looks almost slightly whipped. Not in the same way as Australian Gold or some of those sunscreens I've talked about that are really silicone based. It's just slightly whipped, not super thin and liquidy, but as you blend it out, it does feel very, very lightweight on the skin. It feels very nice and hydrating and has quite a bit of a glow to it. So I would say that this is a great sunscreen for those of you that are looking for something that feels like you're almost wearing nothing, but still provides you with a nice level of hydration and a really, really healthy glow to the skin. While I think the lightweight consistency is going to be perfect for oily skin types, the glow is pretty intense, so I don't know if that's something that most oily skin types would enjoy because I think it can just end up making you look a little bit greasy as the day wears on, but you never know. So I think this would be beautiful if you have normal to dry skin. I personally really do enjoy it on my skin. I just noticed that on days where it's really humid out, especially in the summertime, I'm like, oh my gosh, I look a little bit oily. With one application of this sunscreen, I really like the level of tint that it has. It definitely adds warmth to my skin, but it's not too orange. However, when I am completely fair, like I am in this application clip, two applications do start to look a little bit orangey on me. So keep that in mind. If you're super fair, it can get a little bit orangey yellow. 
It doesn't add a ton of color to the skin, but most tinted sunscreens don't, so it's not going to be something that replaces a foundation or a CC cream, but then it doesn't have any form of a white cast, and it does just add a little bit of color. So I think this is a really good option. I would say it's a relatively basic ingredient label, so for $31, that's really going to be up to you if that's worth the price or not but the formulation is definitely very, very nice. Next, let's talk about their UV clear sunscreen. So this is a broad spectrum SPF 46 that says to calm and protect acne prone skin with high purity niacinamide. We know I'm excited about this. Transparent zinc oxide, UVA and UVB protection. It's a facial sunscreen for skin types that are prone to acne, rosacea, and hyperpigmentation. Active ingredients here are the same exact thing as the daily sunscreen, so 9% zinc oxide and 7.5% octinazate. And while I personally don't have an issue with combination sunscreens, I have many that I have tried and really, really enjoy. I also know that chemical filters and sunscreens can be an issue for people that have sensitive skin, acne prone skin, skin conditions like rosacea or eczema or psoriasis. It's definitely not something that's going to be universally irritating, but it's an ingredient that is known to pose risk for those skin types. So I don't have an issue with it, but I always just find that a little bit confusing when I see a sunscreen that's supposed to be specifically catered to acne and rosacea, but then has a chemical filter. I would kind of expect it to be a completely mineral-based sunscreen. So keep that in mind. I know that some people know that they just can't use chemical filters at all if they have those kinds of skin conditions. The ingredient label here is the same kind of thing for me as that daily sunscreen. There are a few different forms of emollients and texture enhancers, none of which I feel like are incredibly amazing, but that doesn't mean it's a bad thing. They're all good ingredients, shouldn't be an issue for the skin, no forms of fragrance or essential oils, and no known irritants. This also has a sodium hyaluronate and tocopherol, but the standout ingredient here really is the niacinamide, which here, it's actually third on the ingredient label, which is amazing. A lot of the times, and in sunscreens and other skincare products that I have reviewed, we see that brands will call out certain ingredients as the standout part of that product, and then we look at the label and it's at the very bottom, and it's like, really? So here, niacinamide is third on the ingredient label. I love that, and that's the ingredient that specifically makes this something that would be more so suitable or more beneficial to people with acne prone skin, sensitive skin, and people with hyperpigmentation over this daily version because it's something that is going to help to soothe redness and irritated skin. It helps to control sebum production if you have oily skin or you're prone to acne. That's a great thing. It also helps to improve texture and even skin tone. If you have hyperpigmentation, many, many different benefits love niacinamide. So I'm definitely more impressed by this ingredient label. You are paying a few extra dollars for that niacinamide because this one's $38 versus the $31.50. So again, that's really going to be up to you if that's a price point you are willing to spend. In this case, the consistency of this one is very, very nice as well. And while the emollient ingredients and texture enhancers are not the exact same between the daily formulation and the clear formulation, I honestly can't really distinguish between the two as far as the texture formulation, application, and feel goes. They both feel equally lightweight. They both leave a really nice glow to the skin. They both feel hydrating and the tint also is the same in both of them. The other difference that I forgot to say in this clear version is that this also does have iron oxides. It's towards the bottom of the label. I prefer sunscreens with iron oxides because they provide us protection against the longer wavelengths of UVA rays. So that's another benefit to this one. That's not in the daily version, but even with that, there's no difference in the tint. Iron oxides are often used in cosmetics to add that color and pigment. So I was wondering if there would be a difference there. There's really not. It's that same kind of slightly warm undertone, but something that doesn't add a ton of color to the skin or coverage. And this one, again, I would say is equally as glowy. So if you're somebody with oily skin, I don't know if you're going to love this. Even though it does have that niacinamide to help with oil control, it is very glowy, which I personally think is beautiful. But I just know that there are some people with oily skin that would not want something like that and you would prefer something much more mattifying. So I think this is a really, really beautiful sunscreen as well. I feel like it's pretty much the same thing as the Dermatology Tinted Moisturizer. 
So I will link below a video where I show you guys that sunscreen. I've talked about it many times here before. I love that sunscreen. It also has niacinamide. It's also a combination sunscreen. It also has a lightweight finish and feel. It's hydrating. It has a tint to it. I feel like they're identical in my book, to be totally honest. And that one is more affordable than this. And I have a 20% off code with them, which makes it even more affordable. So, I mean... I feel like that probably sounds a little bit biased because you guys know that I'm obsessed with dermatology already, but truly, I hope you guys know that I always am honest, try to be as unbiased as possible, and strictly just talking about the actual look and feel of the products and the standout ingredients. I don't really see why I would ever purchase this over that. But I don't know, maybe you guys have different opinions. So that's just my two cents on that one. It's a good sunscreen. I don't think you can go wrong unless you're super oily. But there seems to be a dupe out there. Next, let's talk about their UV Elements sunscreen. So this is a broad spectrum SPF 44. It says it's a moisturizing physical sunscreen with hyaluronic acid, transparent zinc oxide, UVA and UVB protection. It's a facial sunscreen for all skin types and post-procedure skin, and it's oil-free. Active ingredients for this one are 10% zinc oxide and 5.5% titanium dioxide. So this one is completely mineral with no chemical filters added, so right off the bat may be a better choice for you if you have sensitive or acne prone skin. Again, different forms of emollients, silicone based ingredients and texture enhancers here. No petrolatum in this one, but we do have the dimethicone. This also has iron oxides, but at the very bottom of the label. And then this has the addition of sodium hyaluronate and tocopherol as well. The one other ingredient worth mentioning that is unique to this formulation is ascorbyl palmitate. And that's an antioxidant that's actually a stable form of vitamin C. So there are quite a few different forms of vitamin C. Some are not so stable, some are stable like this one. And this is just going to be an antioxidant that protects our skin from environmental stressors. Again, no fragrance, no irritants, nothing concerning on this ingredient label. So I think this is a great option as well, just from a pure ingredient standpoint and something that a lot of skin types could use without issue. The consistency of this one, again, is so, so similar to those first two. It's almost to the point where you can't really tell a difference. I think it has a little bit more of a cream consistency than the first two, but it still is incredibly lightweight. And again, it's like not really anything that you can notice. I think the other biggest difference for me is that this one just doesn't look as dewy on the skin as those first two. It definitely still leaves a significant glow, don't get me wrong. But I think this is going to be a better option if you have really oily skin or you just don't love that kind of dew slash glow on the face in a sunscreen. I mean, there still is a glow, but it's just not quite the same. And then tint here is the exact same as the first two as well. So another good option that I think is not going to disappoint, I think this one so far is the best for sensitive skin types because it's completely mineral. So that and the addition of vitamin C are the biggest differences. Other than that, not much. And lastly, we have their UV Physical Broad Spectrum SPF 41. This one says it's lightly tinted, it has chemical-free active ingredients, it's oil-free with antioxidants, transparent zinc oxide, UVA, UVB protection, and it's a facial sunscreen for extra sensitive and post-procedure skin. This one has three ounces of product and retails for $33. Active ingredients here are similar to the previous sunscreen, just in slightly different percentages. So this one has 9% zinc oxide and 7% titanium dioxide. Again, completely mineral based. So this one actually has quite a few other ingredients that those first three sunscreens do not. So this doesn't have tocopherol or sodium hyaluronate, but in place of that, it does actually have some really nice antioxidant plant extracts that are going to help to soothe the skin or hydrate the skin, restore the skin just have a variety of skin benefits so things like lecithin linoleic acid quercetin and alpha lipoic acid so i really like seeing that it's definitely different from those first three and then also the consistency and formulation of this definitely strays the most from the first three as well so this one definitely has the thickest creamiest consistency out of all four but in saying that i don't want you to think that it's a thick sunscreen because it definitely is not in my opinion still feels lightweight on the skin still feels very very nice when you're blending it in but it definitely just feels more hydrating and creamy 
whereas those other ones feel more liquidy as you start to rub them out. And this one definitely has the least amount of glow to it, so I think it still looks healthy on the skin, but it's nowhere near those first three. This is definitely going to be your best bet if you're incredibly oily. And at first, the tint looks like it's going to be the same exact thing as the first three, but actually I found that it does leave a tiny bit of a white cast on my skin. So while it is lightly tinted, it's something that just makes my skin look a little bit lighter than I want it to. So not going to be something that's going to work universally for all skin types. If you have deeper skin tones, deep to dark skin tones, this is probably not going to work for you. Keep in mind, it's nowhere near the level of white cast that we've seen in some sunscreens. So like the CeraVe facial sunscreen, the untinted version that has one of the most intense white casts I have personally ever tried on this channel and this is nothing like that but it's just a little bit of a bummer because it's something that says that it's tinted well lightly tinted I guess and it does have a little bit of a white cast but in saying that the thing that made me fall in love with this sunscreen is I was having some serious skin irritation going on I told you guys this in my most recent acne update that I have been testing out new acne prescriptions and in doing that, my skin has been put through the ringer and I had some really intense skin barrier damage all around my mouth. Everything I was putting on my skin aside from Vanna Cream was just causing my skin to burn everywhere. It hurt so bad. It was itchy, super uncomfortable, tight dry and burned like crazy and I actually was up at a cabin over my birthday weekend of course and like this would happen over my birthday when I just want to get a good picture for once but I was super nervous to put on sunscreen because everything was irritating my skin like crazy but I was like you better believe I'm putting sunscreen on I'm not going out on a boat all day with no sunscreen no. So I had this with me and tested this out because it says it's for extra sensitive skin and usually labels like that, I'm like, that means nothing to me. It probably is not going to hold true for me. But in this case, this actually did not irritate my skin at all. I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> okay. I found my sunscreen for when my skin is freaking out. So that's just personal to me, of course, and this might be something that ends up stinging your skin as well if you have irritation, but for what it's worth, I had very serious skin barrier damage. Everything on the planet was an issue except for this and except for Vanna Cream for my cleanser and moisturizer. So this is one that is totally worth it to me to have in my arsenal for those moments where my skin is just not behaving. This is also going to be one that I think works the best, well, I mean, I guess it depends on your skin type. I feel like this will work the best underneath makeup because it has the least amount of dew and glow to it. It's going to be something that is the least likely to break up your makeup, cause it to separate, cause it to not last as long. I still find that those previous sunscreens hold up really well underneath makeup, but if you already have foundation or CC cream that leaves your skin looking very glowy, that might kind of just take it to a level that you do not want that you weren't expecting or planning on. So they all work underneath makeup, but I think if you're looking for one that's gonna be the best under makeup, this is it. And then in that case, that will help to cover up that slight white cast. So that's it for my review on these tinted Alta MD sunscreens. Would I recommend this brand? Would I recommend all of these sunscreens? Definitely. I think it's a really good brand with good ingredients and nothing concerning. And the formulation is definitely cosmetically elegant across the board. And we know that that's not the case with all sunscreens out there. There are plenty that are thick and unpleasant to blend in and just don't look nice on the skin and don't feel nice to wear. I feel like I didn't have the same level of excitement in this video that I maybe have had for some previous sunscreen reviews or previous skincare reviews and that's honestly just because of the price point. You guys know that I love to review affordable skincare and if I can find an affordable skincare product that has great ingredients and a really nice formulation, I would prefer to reach for that and I want to hype that sort of thing up for you guys because I know many of you would rather purchase that as well. So when I do review something that's a little bit pricier, not that these are the most expensive of all time, but when they're a little bit pricier than others, I want to make sure that it's something I think is worth the money and obviously I can't tell you what's worth your money. Is it worth my money? I would say yes, but at the same time, it's not the most revolutionary thing of all time. It's not something you can't find anywhere else in my opinion. So 
really good brand, really good products, price points a little higher, so that's up to you. So you guys will definitely have to let me know in the comments below, are you interested in purchasing any of these sunscreens after watching this review? Are you going to pass on the brand? If you are going to purchase one, let us know in the comments below which one we can all share, or if you currently have one, which one? Have you had a bad experience with any? I'm very curious. Let's chat below, because I know that this brand's a hot topic right now. I do have links to everything in my description box if you are interested in purchasing any. And aside from that, I think that's everything for this review. So if you guys did enjoy this video and found it helpful, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and click on that notification bell. That definitely helps me out and supports my channel, but I also upload three to five days a week, so you don't wanna miss out on my next video. If there's anything else you would like to see from me next, leave that request in the comments below. I would love to do that for you. Otherwise, my next video will be up in a few days. So until then, I hope you have a great few days.